Welcome back to the workshop. This week I'm joined again by Kyle and we are here for an episode of Will It Sharpen? We listened to some ideas that you guys had and we've got a fun episode for you planned. All right, you guys sent in a few suggestions. I have to admit, I'm a little bit disappointed in the creativity that we saw. We can get more creative. So don't forget, leave a comment down below. What do you wanna see us sharpen? And we'll see if we can stump Kyle or Steve or uh, any one of the guys here who is going to sharpen some tools. Kyle has no idea what we're gonna sharpen. I have for ah, you. The Benchmade Infidel. An Infidel. And what makes this knife special is that it is a spear point, dagger, double edged dagger grind, and it's a chisel grind. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like they had a little buff on the back side of it to take off that burr. So we've got all the exciting features. We've got spear point, single bevel that comes to a very crisp tip a very crisp tip well and that's one of the things that needs to be changed on this we've uh it's seen a little bit of use this tip could be sharper and that is uh that's not an easy task i'll do my best you think you can uh this is steve's knife oh now the pressure is on <laughs> so i know steve could sharpen so this us. is a personal carry of one of our mates okay i know steve could do a good job sharpening sharpen it better than Steve. Oh, absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. This is going to be fun. It has a lot of the, you know, features that can be challenging to sharpen, but we'll walk through it. We'll get this knife sharp as new. What options do I have at my disposal, what's, Josh? What's your weapon of choice? We have the full suite of, uh, well, most of it here, of the WorkSharp lineup. I'm going to go with a Ken Onion Blade Grinder. Take it away. I'm in. All right. Now, I also happen to know from my time working with Benchmade that they are using a, a, a coarse abrasive to set the edge and sharpen the edge. And as you mentioned, Josh, we were seeing that buff line across the back. Yep. So you know, my goal when I'm sharpening a knife like this is, is to replicate the factory grind and level of edge refinement so that the, the user experience is bringing it back to what this knife was when it was new. So I'm gonna reduce my belt assortment to just the two belts. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna grind it in and I'm gonna buff off the burr and bring that knife back to uh, essentially where it was when it was new. And then it's a personal decision. If someone wants a different level of edge refinement, you know, they can do that. But we will bring this knife back to like new condition. Now I'm gonna- Allen there for that. I do, I do wanna change my centers here. Hero cameo by the ratcheting hex wrench. <laughs> So adjusting this back pulley, there's two different positions for it, and you're just moving it up about a really? centimeter there. Yeah, there's two settings here, and really what I'm doing here is at the wide setting, it sets a little more belt deflection. Mm -hmm. So, so more concave convex. or convex grind on the knife then. Correct, yeah, it's gonna let the belt slack a little bit more. And on a knife like this, I wanna reduce that amount of belt deflection so I can just move the, uh, the pulley here swear I've used Allen keys before. Okay. You'll notice here we just have the two settings mm -hmm. for short and long centers. Great. So the next thing I want to do is, is set my angle. We're at a 25 now. Um, that's a little steeper uh, than I prefer. I'm gonna come in at a 20 degree. I was talking to Baker and he said that because they're single bevel, they're usually at a much steeper angle. Yeah. He said something around 30 degrees. That's correct. Okay. But where I've found the most comfort and success in this is I like to actually, I, like, I set it at 20 and then I bring the knife up a few degrees mm -hmm. and I feel like I have more control and visibility to come across. So a true free hand. The edge. This, this is gonna be a free hand adventure um, with, with some experience to back me up. All right, I also want a, a medium low speed. Mm -hmm. I wanna be able to feel like I have the time 
to get the right grind and not feel hurried in the journey. So the I'm going to control. Gonna, yep. That D2 blade steel, a little bit hard, but we're not removing a whole lot of material on this. So with a coarse belt, should be pretty quick work. Yeah, and I'm using really light pressure. I mean, I'm essentially just floating the knife across. But already I'm picking up a burr on that flat side of the back of the blade, mm -hmm. but not quite out at the tip in that area of damage that we talked about. So I got a little more work to do out there. And because of this, this single bevel uh, grind on this spear point, I always want to do a full stroke. Yep. So even though the knife very needs, symmetrical. Right. I don't want to jump into sharpening the edge here and create some facets. Yep. And I, I re really appreciate that Benchmade puts a sharpening choil in That's the knife. a nice choil. Gives me a nice clean entrance. But what I can do is I can move a little faster here where I need less work and then just slow my pace as I come into the belly. Focus through the belly on the tip. light pressure, just enough to keep it from chattering on that belt. Yeah, it's a weight of the blade, essentially just hovering across the abrasive. But I'm getting the job done very quickly. That's only my second pass, and now I've gotten that burr all the way out, the way out to, to the, the tip. tip. And I'm starting to get that tip back. Cat claw feel. Yep. And I'm stopping on the middle of the belt. It's really key. And the way I tip test is I'll come in here. When that tip is gone, the knife will just kick out and slide. Yep. So I tend to use my just workbench. Really light. Really light. Again, we're just way to the blade here, but that, that tip is sticking in every direction. Yep. And I've got my burr all the way down the cutting all edge. All the way out. And like that. So before I go to the honing, step and get that burr off. I just want to, I just want to check my work. Did I get the burr all the way down the length of the edge? Did I get the tip back? Did I get the nicks and chips out? Mm -hmm. Does the, the height of the bevel or the reveal match the factory grind? Mm -hmm. So that's how I know when it's time to move away from the, the sharpening and get into the, the honing. Get into the refinement. Right. So I want to be really light handed when I remove the burr off When you the come back to this side. backside, That's especially why. because it's got this coating on there that you don't want to remove it. I don't want to mar that coating. Again, my goal is to get that back to Steve and he he doesn't even know. He looks at that knife doesn't and he goes, it looks happened. like it came out of the box. Well, he doesn't even know I took it, so. Pressure builds. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're ready. I'm gonna get in here and knock the burr off, but I also want to make sure I've, I've gotten a refinement pass on the bevel. So I'm gonna start on the bevel and then I'll do all of the work. So your last back. strokes is just pulling off that burr yep. on the backside. And what are you looking for now? What I'm looking for is like the level of edge refinement. You know, I just want to make sure that I've, I've gotten the bevel side of the knife uh, polished just a little bit. And that's going to make sure that all of the burr is now coming over to the flat on side. On the side. Right? Now, there's a little bit of a change here. When I move to deburring the back, I don't want to be up at a high bevel, right? Because I don't want to back bevel the knife. Yep. I'm going to essentially be flat. just above flat. Really, the flatter I can come in and get that abrasive to the edge, I'm just gonna be getting the burr off, and not creating a secondary bevel. So again, really light pressure, but a lot flatter. Just 
really flat, almost almost resting the whole blade on there, just barely picking it up. Correct, and I pick it up just far enough so that I'm not polishing off the black oxide here. Yep, on the spine there. On the thick part of that spear point. So I just gotta come up just enough to get that burr off. Mm -hmm. And then I wanna check the other side. Make sure you didn't just push it over. Correct, so the D2 sharpens really well that way. The burr is prone to releasing and it did move to the other side. Some steels, you, know, you may need to do a little back and forth if that bird just, you're pushing it side to side, but we got a nice clean break here. You know, we could put that back in Steve's knife collection and he'd never even know you he took it and broke it. I'll back up your story. We're good here, I think. I think we're covered. Let's take wow. a closer look. There's... there's almost no, uh, none of that coating coming off the backside. It's uh it's just uh, very, very minimal. So those back are back to a factory. I mean, it's a, a common factory knife, sharpness. and yet the sharpening principles, you know, that that we're learning are all applicable here. Mm -hmm. you know, we we checked for dull. We looked for damage. You know, we're talking about the progression of grits. So the things that we're learning we can apply them in a lot of different ways to a knife like this. So the, the skills transfer over, they don't necessarily change. It just takes a moment to assess the knife you're sharpening and understand how do I apply what I've learned about angles, steels, grit progressions, levels of damage, and then apply them you know, to a knife. I think the biggest, the biggest thing I'm doing here is that a little bit of that muscle memory I have from mm -hmm. sharpening so many you know, infidels. Um, so I, I do have a feel for where that angle is when I know the machine's at 20. But Steve's right, the, the effective edge angle here on the spear point is closer to 30. So for someone else starting that journey, uh, I would recommend starting at 30 mm -hmm. so that you can be more in that flat orientation. Well, we, and you can check the, the angle of the bevel if you need to. And uh, we had a video on that with coloring the bevel with a Sharpie and, and testing it either on a ceramic or really light abrasive like the, like the 12,000 belt. Mm -hmm. Sharpening or restoring a tip on a knife like this can be a real, a real challenge. Yeah. Uh, but but pay enough attention and go slow and light pressure and it's something that you can do in your own shop and get your favorite knife or fidget toy or the combination of both back to uh, as sharp as the day you got it. Good as new. Good as new. And does it poke? Does it poke? Does it poke? When you guys talked about it poking, does it actually poke stuff? Oh yeah. Does it poke? Does it poke? Right through Stephen's hard work right on the through. ad. Well done, Josh. There you have it. How to sharpen the Benchmade Infidel, but more importantly, that type of blade shape, a spear point, da double, double edged dagger. Uh, hopefully this gives you some confidence in sharpening your own spear points and, and dagger style knives. Uh, if you have questions and please, more ideas about will it sharpen, I wanna stump these guys and see if we can give them something that Kyle doesn't say, this is easy. And, uh, and breeze through it and tell you that it's all the same technique. I want something that's hard for him to figure out and uh, see if we can stump him on camera. Or maybe we'll have Steve up here next time and I'll have to raid uh, Kyle's shoebox for one of his knives. Hit that subscribe button down below. Hit the thumbs up button also if you wanna see more of this and uh, follow us on Instagram. This, uh, this comment and suggestion came from one of our followers there who was just asking how to sharpen his his knife, I think it was the same exact one. It might've been, might been similar, but uh, check us out there and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in this week. If you wanna check out some of our previous videos, click the link here, or if you wanna subscribe, click down here. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.